Welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cheyenne Ketchum. I am the city's communications and public information officer, and I want to welcome you and thank you for attending our July, I almost said June, July Southport Symposium featuring the Finance and Utilities Department. Um, before we get started, we're going to go over a quick order of events, a couple of housekeeping. Um, for those of you who have been here before, you kind of know the drill um, and we thank you for coming back and checking out another department um, so after I sit down we're going to do introductions and each of the uh, people of the finance and utilities department will present a slide from the presentation um, they have asked that we hold all questions until the end of all presentations that way the appropriate person can answer the question the most accurately um, and since we do have all of their staff here or majority of their staff here um, we want to make sure that we can get through those presentations and have ample time for that question and answer session um. Again, unlike Board of Aldermen meetings, I will bring the microphone to you for any questions. You do not need to come up to the podium. Um, so whenever we do get to that question and answer session after the presentations, just raise your hand and I will play Vanna and I will come to you. Um, but without further ado, we are going to go ahead and get started. Thank you for being here this uh, this warm afternoon in beautiful downtown Southport. And I would be uh, remiss if I didn't recognize two of our board members here today, Karen and Tom. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. Uh, my name is Paul Gross. I'm the interim uh, finance director uh, for the city of Southport. Um, let me grab this little slide here okay and our agenda today is quite simple um, we're going to talk about our mission statement our object objectives of the uh, finance and utilities department you're going to get a chance to meet some of our team and the entire team was able to make it today we have someone standing in for us at our utility window so services can continue this afternoon and then at the end, we'll have a question and answer board, uh, question and answer panel for you to ask us any questions that, that you may have. Um, I have the entire team up here today. Uh, we're only missing one person, Ms. Marilyn Stevens, but uh, I thank the, the team for being here today. Um, they're quite, they stay quite busy. And um, again, we appreciate their participation in this symposium. Mission, what's the mission of the Finance and Utilities Department? Our mission is to deliver timely and accurate financial reporting and provide proper oversight of all the expenditures and revenue collections in order to successfully support the operations of the City of Southport. The Finance Department principally assists the City's Board of Aldermen, the City Manager, and all the departments through planning, organizing, and directing the city's financial activities in compliance with applicable federal, state, and local laws, as well as the standards set forth by the Government Accounting Standards Board, we often refer to it as GASB, and Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, GAAAP. Um, to summarize that, we've got multiple bosses, multiple. A lot of regulatory oversight by various organizations, and um, we're trying to stay on top of that here in the city of Southport so we don't get in any trouble. Objectives of our finance and utilities uh, department. Um, first of all, to review and update, as well as develop new financial policies. This was one of the weaknesses identified in your Board of Aldermen's um, assessment of where the town of Southport sets. One of the weaknesses identified was a lack of written financial policies and procedures. So we have made that an objective and we are um, steadily addressing that objective. 
In the last two months, um, I've brought forth four policies. They've all been approved, and I'll have three more for them in August. Secondly, to provide excellent customer service to residents, staff, and management through the implementation of practices that are fair, consistent, and predictable. And certainly, we uh, openly welcome any feedback um, that's sent out through surveys, but we always encourage and promote fair, equitable, and consistent treatment of our, all our citizens in the city of Southport. Third objective was to merge our payroll and timekeeping software into one application. Um, when I arrived here, I guess it was the end of April as interim finance director, we had two separate software applications keeping our time versus our payroll. We recently merged those two software systems um, and we're using a software application called Paylocity. So we're only in about the second week of that merger. Um, things are going pretty good. Can't say they went perfect, but uh, Carrie's working a lot of hours, as is Brian, and uh, as is Brandon, and uh, we're intending on making this merger work and work successfully for the staff. Next, we recommend changes in software, not only to our payroll and timekeeping system, but to other um, applications that uh, might improve the efficiency, the effectiveness, reduce duplication, and increase opportunities for merging of multiple software applications. Next, we assist the city manager, uh, uh, Bonnie Therian, and the Board of Aldermen in developing a budget which aligns with the city's priorities. And as um, Ms. Bonnie has often stated, your input is extremely valuable in developing these budgets annually. And Southport recently passed their FY23 slash 24 budget. And I'm proud to say that it was passed with a tax neutral rate of 27.5 cents per $100 value. Next, we're to, we develop a plan to work towards GFOA, and that stands for Governmental Financial Officers Association Budget Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Budget Reporting. And that's a goal that we have um, for this upcoming year. Next, we collaborate with federal, state, and local municipal partners to save money through group buying, resource sharing, access to grants, loans, and other initiatives of mutual interest. Recently, I reached out to all the department heads to bring the, to their attention um, buying opportunities through the North Carolina Department of Administration, State, Purch State Purchasing and Contract Division, which puts out um, requests for bids on multiple items, supplies, materials, and equipment. And it's through that purchasing power through the whole state of North Carolina that gives us the opportunity to save money for local taxpayers. There are other similar uh, opportunities through the North Carolina Sheriff's Association where they've already bid out these um, commodities, these um, uh, as well as services and equipment. And we can also take advantage of those bids to save money once again. Currently, we're negotiating, and it's a little, we're still early, also about our water and sewer system. Um, uh, we are negotiating with Brunswick County government as to whether or not a merger might be feasible and in the best interest of the city of Southport to address our uh, water and sewer needs for the future. And through that economy of scale through merger, we hope that the long-term effects might be to reduce our, um, the cost of our water and sewer services. So that economy of scale is something that we're gonna pursue um, very soon with the city, with the um, county of Brunswick. Next, we wanna maximize our operating and capital investment opportunities using judgment and care, which follows principles of safety of principle liquidity of investment, and investment yield. Southport has many capital assets here, in, um, here within our city, and certainly those capital assets must be maintained. And if we don't maintain them, 
then the cost of renovating, repairing, refurbishing them only gets worse. So it's very important that the city of Southport maintain an adequate uh, capital investment fund to uh, address our uh, capital assets and keep them in good working order. Next, develop internal controls to safeguard assets, ensure financial information is accurate and reliable, and to comply with federal, state, and local laws and regulations which prevent fraud, waste, and abuse. One of the policies that I've already written and I'll be bringing forward to the Board of Aldermen in August is an internal control policy. We currently do not have an internal control policy in the city of Southport. We are already implementing procedures with internal controls. Um, one of the most recent ones was with our cash deposits. Um, we did not have adequate, to be perfectly honest, we did not have adequate internal controls on cash deposits. Uh, very simple, we're now requiring two people to count that daily cash and sign a document stating exactly how much is being deposited. Simple things like that can safeguard our funds and ensure that we're in compliance with rules, regulations, and recommendations from our auditor. Uh, it was quite coincidental that uh, Brandon and I and others are working on our, uh, working with our auditors currently who are uh, beginning their audit of our FY3 financials. And one of 28 documents that they have requested is our internal control policy. So uh, we have drafted one and we will footnote that it will be hopefully passed on uh, our next board meeting in August. So very timely that that, uh, that one is being uh, worked on and has already actually been, the draft is already done. Um, submit an audited set of financial statements to the local government commission, a unit of the state treasurer's office which provides administrative oversight and support of local municipalities within four months after the end of the fiscal year. So we're working closely with our auditors to try to get our FY23 financial statements audited and meet this important deadline to submit the audited report to the LGC Local Government Commission. The Local Government Commission is a unit of the state treasurer's office. It does provide administrative oversight and support to local municipalities. They are also somewhat regulatory in that they must approve any debt that a local municipality um, decides they want to undertake for a bond to, to, to for example, to fund long-term long -term infrastructure approvals. So the LGC is a very important um, unit of state government that provides this oversight to local municipalities. As you can see, our staff up here is somewhat limited. We're nine strong, seven permanent, two part-time employees. So we're looking into uh, cross-training for staff because when one person's out, we don't really have a f person full-time to back up what they're doing. So thank goodness we've got people like Brandon who's worked in another area, and now he's more on the budget side. Um, Teresa has been around, uh, Amity, Kelly, Carrie, uh, Angie, and, and uh, Miss Joyce. So we're all working together as a team, and it takes a team to, uh, to, to function in this work environment, uh, as many things that go on behind the scenes in, in finance. A little bit about myself. Um, uh, as you can see, I'm a graduate of North Carolina State University, bachelor's and master's. Go Wolfpack. Um, and I've already talked a lot about what we do in finance uh, and utilities. Um, just a lot going on. These people will tell you what they do in detail. Um, it takes a team effort, and that's why my photo is up there. Uh, this is truly a team effort to accomplish our goals and to meet all our regulatory deadlines. My background and my hobbies, I love to fish, as you can see. My pride and joy, Cody. My wife's not here today, but Cody's second, so. Um, my wife would have been here, but she's suffering from a 
reaction to her second shingle shot. But uh, anyway, Cody is our pride and joy. Um, I was a member of USTA after I retired from uh, local government. I worked for state government for 30 years, 20 of it in finance and budget with the North Carolina Department of Corrections. I also served as finance director for Wake County Human Services, which included social services, mental health, and public health. So 30 years with the state and seven years with local government. And I thought I was done working um, until South Ford approached me and asked me to fill in temporarily with the emphasis on temporarily until we can find a permanent finance director, which hopefully will be soon. Um, I did take up tennis at age 62, believe it or not. Um, positive and negative about that. Uh, the negative side is I've had two knee replacements <laughs> from tennis. So it is tough on the knees, especially when you get into your 60s. Uh, the positive is uh, I've been on several good teams. We have five state championships, uh, state of North Carolina men's team championships. And I've played in, on teams that were 18 above, for age 18 and above, 40 and above, and the last one was 65 and above. So uh, very fortunate to have had some good partners to achieve those five state championships. If you're down around the Yacht Basin on the weekend, you're liable to see me on the end of the city pier behind Fishy Fishy. That's my happy place. I like to sit back there on the end of the pier, fish for croaker, flounder, caught a little bit of everything back there and listen to the music coming from the Yacht Basin as well. Um, lo I love Southport. Uh, my wife and I have had a home in the Southport area for 16 years. The last two years have been in downtown within the city limits and we've, we finally awoke that this is where the action is and this is where we want to be. And uh, you'll often see me running around town on a golf cart as well. Um, I'm usually in the Christmas parade dressed as Santa Claus, by the way, on my golf cart. So anyway, that's a little bit about myself, my background. Um, again, we have nine dedicated public employees. Um, the, the usual areas of responsibility in, in finance and utilities, uh, accounts payable, receivable, working with auditors, compliance, payroll, budget management, and a little bit of everything. So with that said, I will turn the next slide over to our next presenter, Brandon Stevens, our Deputy Finance Director. Good afternoon, thanks for joining us. So my name is Brandon Stevens, the Deputy Finance Director. I am actually local to Southport, not city limits, I just borrowed the zip code, <laughs> but my family's been here since 72. Um, they came from Missouri and Conway, South Carolina. So going into that, uh, I also graduated from UNCW, so as local as you can get with four-year universities. And a little more of what Paul went into, uh, I do handle, assist with the budget. I am back up to Paul if he's out, then I pretty much take temporary command but the budgeting and collaborations, one whole big package, and that's even with the audit or anything in finance. We work a lot with the other departments to make sure their finances and day in and day out is on the up and up and throughout the year because they have to be really pinpoint on that budget. The budget is what is there to keep them in line. <laughs> So we do work a lot with them, and it's, it's always great working with all the departments there is in Southport. For the audit, there's multiple audits. The one main one happens at the end of the year, or the end of the fiscal year, and starts July and can go up until November, hopefully sooner this year. <laughs> but we have audits for payroll that we have to do uh, for OPEB, taxes and everything that just shows you how much regulation there is in the finance world. And then I'm also back up to accounts payable and payroll. I don't have to do it as much because everyone's good at what they do, but I am there if anyone needs help in it. I do all the journal entries for payroll, for multiple transactions that 
we have electronic deposits for or whatnot just to make sure that we're complying with that budget and with the audit at the end of the year. But it's always nice to be able to work in, in the area. I'm from here and I always enjoyed being in the area. And the team in Southport is really great. And as long as the aldermen, the city managers are always open to discussion as well. So that is the general view of what my position is. <laughs> At my job, it, with the city, with the city. I, I've been with the city about two years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was at the Brunswick County before then at the government complex. Uh, I was in utilities at the county originally. I, I did a lot of financials with the utilities over there. My name is Teresa Jones, and um, I moved to Southport in 1972, not with Brandon, a different family, but <laughs> my family came here when CPNL was being built, and my father uh, uh, was hired out there. And um, I graduated also from UNCW, so Brandon and I have a lot in common. Uh, I, prior to the city, I worked 26 years with a local bank, so my background was within finance uh, at that point as well. Uh, I married my high school sweetheart. Um, still with them today, and I ha we have one daughter. She lives in New Jersey, but um, she does come home to visit us. And I enjoy horseback riding. I've done that for probably 35 years now, and just trail riding, nothing competitive. And I, I like to read, and um, I've worked for the city for almost seven years now. So, and what I do with the city is one of the, one of the things that I do the most often is the bank reconciliation. So with having the banking background, uh, I reconcile the accounts with the city, make sure that they're um, you know, finding any issues that we may have and getting those corrected as we go. It's kind of like doing your own checkbooks, a lot more transactions. Um, I'm also the tax collector, and as you, most of you probably know, the county collects our taxes for us. So I don't actually collect the city taxes per se for property, but I do collect beer and wine taxes, um, occupancy taxes, um, uh, Beer and wine, I don't know if, any, if people are aware of that, but the, the businesses that serve beer and wine have to pay a tax annually, and that's from May to April. They get billed like in March. Occupancy taxes are required um, if you rent your, your house or even your room out um, for less than 90 days, and uh, you just need to make sure that if you do that, that you are checking with the Development Services Department to make sure that you are in a permissible area to do that. Um, so I wouldn't answer those questions for you, but I will take your tax and record it and um, make sure we are collect collecting that. Um, also, through tax collecting duties, I also do um, taxes for annexed properties. I don't think many people realize that taxes are actually on a fiscal year. So when you, if, if someone annexes into the city, say in October, I need to collect taxes from that date till June 30th, and then the county takes over. So if you do annex into the city, there is a tax that's due directly and billed by the city. Um, we also would uh, assign addresses. So if you're gonna build a new house and the lot doesn't have an address currently, they come through me and I work with the county to get the addresses assigned. And um, I do debt set off. So if you leave the city and leave us with a bill outstanding on your utility or you know, any other bill for that matter, um, if it's $50 or more, we do, after 60 days of not being paid and we do send a second notice, that goes to um, the North Carolina debt set off system. And if you get a tax refund or if you get any lottery winnings, hope, likely we'll get that money. So we try to collect that way. Um, Similar to the debt set off, we also have the SG program, of course, so that if you have a check that was mailed to you and you've, it's been over a year outstanding, um, we do have to submit that to the state and then you go through the, um, the, the unclaimed property to, to get that money yourself after that, once that year is up. Um, I supervise the utility department. I've actually done the billing in the past. I've done the, the customer service area. So if uh, Amity or Kelly are out, I, I help out up front and answer questions and help them any time I'm able to. 
Um, but mostly I'm in the background taking care of um, the bank rec and the tax things. But um, if ever you need anything, I am available to meet with you. So just come by and see us. Hi, I am Kelly Tooley. I've been with the city for a little over a year now, and I've been a Southport resident since 2000 and, I'm sorry, 2015. Um, I currently have my bachelor's degree in human services, and currently I work as um, the utilities uh, customer service representative. And so there, I collect and process revenue from utility customers and other city revenue services. Um, I reconcile daily cash receipts. I prepare various logs reports as needed. I maintain a spreadsheet on occupancy taxes as well as retiree insurance. I answer inquiries and questions in person about phone services, due dates, accounts, billing, as well as extensions. And I also manage complaints. So if you ever have a complaint or any other inquiries about your account, I'm your go-to girl. Um, I'm currently, well soon I will be cross training in utility billing, so that will also be something that I do in the future as well. That's mainly what I do in the customer service area. Next, is that right? Oh, hi. <laughs> Angie. Good afternoon. My name is Angie Bates. I am a native of Southport. Um, my father was the assistant chief of Southport way back when. <laughs> um, I am currently in accounts payable, but in my nine years that I've been with the city, I started out in utility billing, in utility billing I help implement the new software that we currently use, the new water meters that we use. Um, what else do we do? Oh, we implemented the, using the credit cards and stuff because we didn't have all that when I started. It was thousands and thousands of checks. So um, I helped implement all that stuff that which has made it better for everyone and after i left from utility billing i was doing um tax collector and then i moved to accounts payable and with accounts payable um we get the invoices in i have to distribute them out to departments and then there's some that i don't distribute that i have to approve and once they're approved by whomever they're processed by me so that we can get checks printed out for Fridays. And we also have, I call myself the detective because I have to run down stuff all the time. Um, I work heavily with most of the department heads and they help me also. But um, that's basically my job is to make sure everybody's getting paid for everything that we bought. Um, <laughs> but that's basically my job. Thank y'all. Hello everyone, I'm Amity Foreman. Um, I am not a native of Southport. I am a native of Charlotte, North Carolina. A fun fact about me, I am a four-time world champion barrel racer. My horse got hurt in 2015, um, and it was a career-ending injury. And instead of going back through that, what I need to do? Oh, well, hello. Look at that. All of that good stuff there. Um, once my horse got hurt, I bought a restaurant, and I owned a restaurant till 2020. COVID hit. I sold my shares said I'm moving to the beach. I'm moving to Southport. That's where I grew up. That's where my family came every summer. 
Um, so I bought a piece of property and moved. Um, I started working at Oak Island um, and did their, all their CSR work. Um, was fortunate enough to move to Southport and I have fell in love with um, Southport even more. Um, I do all the utility billing, so I'm the wonderful woman that sends you this wonderful bill every month. I process about 4,000 meters, um, and I have to verify every single meter and make sure, does this make sense? Why am I billing this customer this amount of money? Um, it takes a lot of time, and please know that I do not send a bill just to send a bill. I verify, I make sure that I send um, service requests to Public Works for them to check your meter to make sure that that is the correct amount of water that you used. Um, we, um, I bounce off of Kelly. She helps me in, in the complaints. Um, customers call in, why am I be being billed this much? Um, we verify, we double check. Um, we are constantly in your meter box, making sure that we are not just billing you just to bill you tens of thousands of gallons of water and sewer. Um, as Angie stated, we have AMI meters that automatically read. They read every hour on the hour. Um, they update in the middle of the night. Um, so you can give us a call and we can give you an hourly report of everything that's flowing through your meter. Um, we check daily for large leak alerts, small leak alerts. If your watt meter has flown for 72 hours or more, we will receive an alert and we will give you a call and let you know, hey, you've got something going on. We can't actually tell you what may be going on, but we can tell you that you got lots of water running through that meter. Um, I also work with Public Works um, very much to, to investigate things that are going on in the city. If you call in and say there's a pothole, um, trees need to be cut down, something's going on and you want it addressed, you would either speak to me or to Kelly and then we will send a service request on to Public Works. Um, I also assist Kelly with transferring uh, new services, um, anything that may be built or if you purchased a home, you would go through Kelly or I and we will get that service transferred over water, water sewer and electric. Um, I guess that's about it, right? <laughs> we look forward to all your questions and we are always here to help you guys in any, any time that you feel like something's going on. We will be more than happy to assist you. Hi everyone, I'm Carrie McCall and I'm the Payroll Benefits Specialist. I am not a native of South Fork. My husband and I had a five year plan to be closer to the beach and I cut it short by about four years. Um, a position was open here. I've been with state and local government entities for a little over 10 years. So I wanted to stay for retirement purposes. Apply for the position, I said, I guess we're going now. <laughs> So we have two girls, we have a two year old and a 13 year old, um, and we currently live in Lake Waccamaw, so I commute. I said I get the best of both worlds. I live on a lake and I come to the coast. <laughs> so um, I pretty much just make sure everyone's pay, paid on time and they're happy <laughs> um, is my main goal. Uh, I have been implementing a new time and labor system as Paul discussed earlier uh, trying to streamline some of the systems we have because we've had two, we've, we've had two, one to do our time and labor, one for payroll, so now we all have it on one. We're working out kinks, so hopefully in the next, next payroll will go a little bit smoother. Um, I also do all the benefits, so all of our health insurances. Um, I, I work with all employees to sign up for new enrollment. Um, I do all the reconciliations for those to make sure that we're deducting the correct amount from our employees to meet our bills. Um, what else? I didn't, I didn't write notes like everyone else. I was not prepared. <laughs> so I apologize. Um, and then I kind of work with HR as well as far as um, with new hires, getting those people put in our systems, uh, getting them set up with their accounts. And that's about it. Thank you.
Okay. Which way? Which way? They won't do anything. Okay. Can you read what I do? <laughs> okay. My name is Joyce Cox. I'm a lifer. Yeah, I know a lot about Brunswick County. I worked in the school system for 29 years. And I retired, I drove a bus for 30 years. And I have law enforcement, I worked with uh, Chief of Police Gary, and I worked with Chief of Police Ty Coyne. I will have 12 years with Southport City Hall come September. I have a record. <laughs> I'm also a veteran. I've been in the military. Okay, more about City Hall. Uh, Marilyn and I, I'm gonna talk for both of us. Marilyn and I assist everybody. Uh, we receive the bad calls, the good calls. We receive everything, the good, the bad, and the ugly. We are the first ones that you see when you enter the office of City Hall. So uh, Marilyn and I have a lot of experience with people. So she has a lot of experience with the city and Brunswick County too, okay? My hobby is I was riding horse. I got hurt twice. Um, I love line dancing. And uh, if you can read this, uh, you want me to read it? No? Okay, that's fine. Um, we're there at City Hall if you need us. Just give us a call, okay? And I'll get to uh, sometimes deal with all the city, city employees too. That's a good thing. We are very, very known in Southport, North Carolina. Okay, that's about it. Do I need to move this again? You want to stop the questions with me first and then go down the line? Miss Joyce, you can go ahead and sit back down at the table. And once Miss Joyce gets seated, we'll okay. go ahead and open the floor up for the question and answer panel session. So, like I said, just, you know, whenever you're ready, go ahead, pop your, pop your hand up, and I will bring the microphone over to you. Tom, yes, you do. You know. I just wanted to thank you all. I, I learned a lot. Tell you the truth, there's a lot of things I didn't know. So thank you very much. I just recently moved here from uh, Speedway, Indiana, home of the Indy 500. And uh, I live in different places. I lived in New Orleans for about 10 years before I went in the service Air Force and afterwards. And uh, I drove a school bus for a year when I was 19. and. That was enough for me. And uh, in the service, I was stationed in Zaragoza, Spain for 37 months. And that's that northern Spain. That, they uh, issue uh, parkas for winter time because it gets cold and windy. But I have been into like seven different countries in Europe, so that's pretty neat. Been to the island of Ibiza. But I love Speedway, Indiana, but I'm here now with my wife. and. Uh, our daughter and her husband, two grandkids are here. They've lived on Oak Island twice for his job. And uh, finally, uh, they moved here in Southport. But anyway, my question, I think it's for Kelly. When I got my first utility bill, it wasn't the uh, water, it was the sewer. I go, wow. <laughs> it was about three times as much as the water bill, and I was just What's happening with that? Because I know there's long distance out there where they pump it, but it's like, it was quite the shock. And your question was about the sewer? Yeah. So the sewer rates, your base rate is going to be $77. So I know that's a lot higher than most oh. cities around, but it's the base rate is $77 for sewer. And that you're allotted 1,000 gallons within that $77. So anything above that will result in an increased bill. Oh, OK. Mm -hmm. Because. The speedway is pretty much whatever your water usage was is about that is your sewer bill, but I said, oh, okay. Well, thank you. Now I know. You're welcome. Welcome to Southport. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm retired, so I'm here. I love it here. And I was amazed that the little town, uh, it was kind of like Speedway when the f Memorial Day, we, they get a quarter million people there for the race. And here for the 4th of July, it's like, man, this place is jamming. <laughs> 
Thank you for your service and for your question. Um, just like to add briefly that um, um, the water and sewer rates um, are a concern to not only the employees but our aldermen and um, it's sort of complicated but it, it goes back for years and years in that Southport has not adequately addressed its infrastructure on, their, on water and sewer. Um, we've gone back and forth. Are we going to expand our current water and sewer infrastructure and continue to offer those services ourselves? Or is it more economically advantageous to us in the long run to merge and join the Brunswick County water and sewer system um, and get the lower rates? Currently, Southport um, does receive their water from Brunswick County, but because we're not an original member of their water and sewer system, we have to pay the higher rate. And to give you an example of that, uh, I looked up on the internet about all the municipalities in Brunswick County, and I believe it was in 2020 or 2021, Southport was paying $5.75 per 100 gallons of water. Many of the municipalities who were original members with the Brunswick County water and sewer system are only paying about $3.75. So you can see where by not being an original member of that water and sewer system that helped build the Brunswick County system, we're being charged the higher rate currently. Now, we'll be entering some negotiations called an intergovernmental uh, agreement um, that the board will be involved in heavily. Um, hopefully in the next few months, there'll be some clear direction on what our long-term um, efforts will be and whether or not we'll be able to work things out to merge with Brunswick County. So, yeah, it's, it's been a long uh, history, neglect of the infrastructure and through economy of scale, being able to join all these other municipalities and getting our water and sewer from Brunswick County, we hope that that will be in the best interest of Southport in the long run. Now, Brunswick County is gonna to have to expand their water and sewer infrastructure, build another plant. So they're currently evaluating what the financial impact will be uh, for them. And obviously they're gonna to have to pass some of those costs back on to Southport should we decide to, to join up with their system. But that's basically where we're at. And uh, stay tuned, more to come in the next few months. Hi, I think my question is for Teresa. Um, taxes, you said Brunswick County collects all our taxes. Um, that includes the Smithfield Dozier tax as well. And I guess it's a Southport Fire Department fee, or I don't know if tax is the right word, but does that all go through your department also? I'm sorry, does it all go what? Through my department, I got you, yes. Yeah, it is, it is all collected. If you see your county tax bill that you get from Brunswick County each year, right. it has all of those individual, uh, individually uh, broken down on your bill. So you'll see the Southport taxes, set the, the Southport fire fee, you see the, um, Dozier Hospital tax, and then the county. So they're all in there together. I know they're all in there together, but that all then processes to you, or to your department. And, sorry. I know they all process, they come in all together, but then, then they process through your department and are distributed to the fire department and to Dozier. Yes, we get the property taxes through, um, EFT, electric, electronic funds from the county, and then we, we put them into our, our system and did a general ledger to the different departments. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. I recently moved here from Indianapolis, Indiana, not Speedway, but not too far away from Speedway. He's got better donuts out where he, uh, he came from. Uh, yeah, but uh, my, my question is, in this uh, I'm not sure if anybody here can answer it, but since moving here, I read about water quality and those forever chemicals, but what is the quality of the water that we get from Brunswick County? Can anybody address that? 
Mark has to, Mark Cabin is our water specialist here at City of Southport. He works for Public Works. Um, he's um, also what I call our meter tech. He has to do several tests a month, um, so I can't really answer for him, but any question like that would go directly to Mark Cabin in Public Works. Um, he works under Tom Stanley, and they, I know they have to do several tests a month. Those test results have to be sent to the county and to the state. Um, we do have to do a consumer report that we post on the website. I think it's currently posted for this fiscal year, correct, Shan? Um, but he does do the water testing. As far as the quality, I mean, that's subject to what you feel is the water quality. I know my dog drinks it, therefore I drink it. And if my dog doesn't drink it, I'm not drinking it. So I feel like our water quality is, is, is perfectly fine. Um, I know Mark has within 24 hours, if a test comes available that is not appropriate findings, he has to alert. Um, and I would think that that would go to Cheyenne and she would put a shout out on the Southport network and on, uh, on our city's website. But it has to be public record and public notification within 24 hours. All right, well maybe I'll try to approach Mark and get a little bit better explanation. Thank you very much and appreciate all the uh, uh, presentations. Also, sir, um, Brunswick County does all the tests and they put on their website and they have the actual numbers for each item that might be in the water but they have to put that report out on their website, same as what we report to them. My question is going to you, Dory, as our uh, assistant city manager. Are we close with getting a new finance director? I know that we've had this posted for quite a while and the window closes next Friday. And also to ask how the city looks at a group of um, folks who work in finance as far as um, promoting within instead of uh, advertising. And I know probably there is some requirement from somebody up higher that says we must post any time there is a, a, an opening. Uh, on the city staff, so maybe you could give us a little uh, input on that, please. Sure. Um, we have received several applications for the position. Um, as you know, Bonnie has been out. Um, she comes back on Thursday, and I believe we will schedule interviews for those um, applicants as soon as possible and try to get someone in that position, um, hopefully within the next couple of months if they have to relocate. Um, and then as far as um, promoting from within, I think that we certainly are interested in doing that. Um, we want to help develop staff when they're interested in, in learning more and taking on more responsibility. Um, I know I'm, I'm a beneficiary of that myself and um, I, think, I think all the board members and, and city manager are interested in, in promoting when someone is ready and someone is interested in doing the job. But they would have to you know, go through the process of the application and submitting that like anyone else and then we would schedule the interview. This, this Who day, says? It's, it's state law, I believe, that you have to, like uh, employment law, that you have to pu publish it. I think sometimes I've seen it where like internal candidates are only ones that are included in different things, but I've, I've never experienced that firsthand. But I think that the state uh, laws do require. And it, is it a, normally a 30-day window, or is I there a time limit? I don't think that there's a time limit. It's just until we can get somebody to apply. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. I, I could also add that um, we posted the position previously, got a number of applications, um, had interviews, uh, made an offer to someone. I'm not at liberty to tell you who that was, but ultimately um, that person declined. Um, as a result, one of our other top three candidates had found another job by the time this process was coming to, close to an end. Um, so at that time, we were not comfortable with proceeding with our third or our fourth choice, and we decided to repost. Uh, currently, we have, I can share with you, currently we have 10 applicants. Um, there's a couple good ones in there. I know the interim director is keeping his fingers crossed. <laughs> um, but uh, when Bonnie comes back, hopefully on, is it Monday, Dory? 
Thursday, okay. Well, I'll get ready for that. <laughs> Hopefully when Bonnie comes back, uh, we'll be reviewing the applicant pool with her and scheduling interviews for this next, uh, next round of applicants. Hi, my name is Rick Jones. I just have a quick follow-up on Pat's question uh, for Dory. Uh, are we looking for anything different in the next finance director? Uh, you know, where do you, city staff, and the aldermen see us taking that position, and what benefits to the residents? That is a very good question. Um, I don't know, I don't want to, you know, speak about anyone in the past, but as far as what we would be looking for, I think someone who is great at communication and follow through, um, I think that those qualities are essential for any department head, but um, especially someone who's in charge of maintaining the budget and, and collaborating with the department heads to maintain those, um, those items. Um, I think someone who aspires to do good things for Southport as far as the certified budget program, um, I think it's important to have as much out information to the public as possible. So we would want someone who's proactive as far as that goes um, and just well organized and, and knows their finance law. If I could add the uh, current posting has a list of preferences in the posting, which includes uh, obviously an accounting background, some, preferably some uh, government accounting background. Um, CPA is also um, preferred. So uh, I think we've got all the, the right uh, qualifications, um, as we used to call KSAs, knowledge, skills, and abilities that we're recruiting for in our posting. Um, I think that Bonnie's prepared to go aggressively and make a, uh, a good hire this, ne this next go around, and uh, only time will tell. Well, thank you both. And Paul, thank you for uh, stepping up. The city is uh, lucky to have you uh, fill in with your experience. And one final thing is my dog drinks filtered water out of the refrigerator, <laughs> which is what we do. So for, if you're a new resident, you know, make sure you have a nice uh, filter, always fresh in your refrigerator uh, for you puppies and whomever. So thank you. I'm from the old school where we drank out of the hose spigot, so uh, I mean, I, that's where my go-to is. If, <laughs> if, if my dog will drink it, then I will drink it. Uh, I meant also to say thank you to all of you for uh, the job you do at City Hall. Um, we don't get to see your faces often enough. Maybe that's a good thing <laughs> if you're after our tax money, Teresa. <laughs> but um, thank you. And um, I, I remember seeing Paul quite a bit uh, over the last uh, couple of months in all these budget meetings that um, we've been through. And I kept thinking to myself, who is this guy, you know? <laughs> Where did he come from? So I want to thank you especially and to Brandon, too, for the good job uh, the both of you did, along with Bonnie on getting that budget together. I know that was not easy, and I sat in and observed most all of the meetings, and so I observed what a good job you were doing and appreciate that because that is the major thing for our city is getting that budget passed every year so we can march forward and not fall backward. So thank you. Any other questions? Going once, <laughs> twice. Ooh, we almost lost a microphone there, everybody. All right, again, thank you all for attending. We very much appreciate your attendance in these symposiums. Um, they, again, this is the first time that we have, or this is the first year that we have done something like this. Um, so we do appreciate any and all feedback that you can give us. Um, they are anonymous surveys. The one on the left is the feedback survey. Um, it is anonymous unless you do want to provide your name for further follow-up. Um, but it does help us to make future symposiums better and the feedback does get sent to the departments as well at the end so that way they know um, what everybody thought. Uh, if you are looking forward to the August symposium like we are, it's going to feature the police department and it is going to be August 14th. 
here in the community building at 2 p.m. Um, so you can register for that one by scanning the QR code on the right um, or visiting the community relations webpage um, and going to the Southport Symposium tab. So with, uh, um, if that is all and we don't have any other questions, again, thank you all for coming um, and we will see you in August. So, and thank you all again for taking time out of your afternoon to be here. We appreciate you coming out and telling us more about your department. So everybody have a good afternoon and get safe getting home.